called Disruption King. And uh, here it comes back around, rounding the corners with Paul Fenton, who I think is going uh, with the Gerard Fabiano style deck, really reinvigorating that kind of archetype. He's, and uh, looks like we've already started the game. We've got a turn one Thoughtseize. Uh, Hit Pulling by out a force, force of will. will. Must uh, be a good card being protected. Yeah, I definitely. would bet Stoneforge, Mystic, or Bob. Dark Confidant. So just to uh, give you guys an idea, comparing these lists, they actually are very similar despite having a uh, uh, slight, you know, different different color choices here. Both players playing Dark Confidants, both players playing Stoneforge Mystic, both players with... Uh, what's that? Keep going. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Both players with Swords to Plowshares and uh, Umazawa's Jite and Sword of Feast and Fam and Batter Skull Vindicate. A lot of uh, similarities in these lists. So there's the turn to Stoneforge Mystic. Searches for Batter Skull. Now we used to say, well, this looks like standard, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't look like standard. <laughs> you don't get to see this in the standard. This looks like what extended might have been. Fair. Or modern. Uh, is, that, is that like what modern might have been, I think is what you meant. No, oh, no, no, what extended might have been. Because uh, we would be seeing this in extended at the PT. True, but there is extended. Extended still can be oh, this. Fair enough. Soars to plowshares from Paul. So waste, he wastes a tundra and then swords is away the, uh, the Stoneforge Mystic. So we know Michael has a batter skull in hand, but... In third place, Chris Unable to vial out that batter skull without the Stone Forge Mystic. And Michael. Michael Caffrey dropping a dark confidant into play. Okay, so for those of you who were overhearing what was being said over the loudspeakers, um, the number one seed at the end of the first set of the draft challenge. Melissa de Tora, perhaps the most famous of the Magic's, player, Magic's female players in the game. Um, maybe Michelle Bush might be the other person. Both Northeast players. Michelle Bush now retired. Mel Mel Melissa de Tora still playing the game. So meanwhile, Bob was bolted by Paul. Michael plays with third land and uh, passes back to Paul here. Paul has a batter skull in hand, which he did not fetch up. Naturally drew into a batter skull. Michael, we know, has a batter skull in hand. And, uh, off of that uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Only lands in play right now. He gets his third land. And so both players with three lands, access to all their colors. Three mana could be a Vindicate, could be a Sword of Feast and Famine, could be a Chain of Spells, could be a Mirren Crusader. Uh, not, a, not with that color combination. Starts with the Grim Lava Mancer, and then casts maybe him to Turok. Bob. We have a, a spell, spell snare, snare for Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. 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 Okay, Joey. Jinx. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Grim Lava Mancer on the table. And Michael Caffrey says go. No play, no land drop, no play. A Plains from Paul. And there's a Stoneforge Stone Mystic. Mystic. Now they both have dropped Stoneforge Mystic. If this resolves, um, yep, it does resolve. And Paul will choose. I'm going to uh, bet a GT. There it is, the GT. Yeah. A non batter skull equipment. This leaves him with one le equipment left in his library the Sword of Feast and Famine. Both players playing the same equipment package. One Sword of Feast and Famine, one GTA, one Batter Skull. We have seen in, a, in uh, this format um, sometimes sort of body in mind. Yeah, talked to a couple of players earlier this morning uh, saying they're playing Stoneforge Mystic alongside Body in Mind. Four mana, it might be uh, Jace here. Body in Mind notably over Feast and Famine. 
We get a swords. I didn't see what it was targeting. It looks no, like it must neither. have been the Grim Lava Mancer. Shoots you, he says. Take two. Makes sense. I don't think he would have targeted the uh, Stone Forge Mystic. He's not aware that there's already a Battle Skull in Paul's hand. That's true. He says go. There's a Thought Seize from Paul, and we're going to see it hit the, hit the uh, stack. Michael has Batter Skull and something else. So, response, Vendillion, Vendillion click, click was the other card. Which I expect we're going to see a response to that as well. Maybe one of the main reasons that he decided to get rid of that uh, that lava mancer just to he shows the batter skull. He get a so fresh card yeah, in his hand. Targets himself and uh, yep. is able to put the batter skull back, draw it. One of the underused abilities on the million click, I think, a lot of times. Thought sees resolves, takes care of Jace the mind sculptor, and it, yeah, that is definitely one of the more um, uncommon abilities. I actually really like Team Italia as a deck. Um, I mean, it basically has a lot of card advantage, and it has a lot of disruption. Needs more blue. <laughs> <laughs> in, in lieu of the blue, it runs things like Hinduturok. I see... Uh, down Batter comes skull. Batter Skull. He's looking for a token for it. What kind of germ will he use? The germ germ. Classic germ. Yes. Edgar Flores likes to use a picture of himself for the germ. <laughs> and Umazel is Jite joins Batter Skull. Ouch. That's a lot of good Hanging stuff out with on that, that germ. germ. That germ is uh, dangerous. 4-4. Four, four. Life Link, Vigilance, and Told Najite. Block. All right, block, yeah. Might as well get the block in while you can. One of the best plays that Michael Caffrey could potentially lay here is a Vindicate on that Batter Skull, but he does not have one. Scoops it up, doesn't see a way out of this problem. Yeah, Vindicate on Batter Skull would have been pretty pretty yeah. clutch right there. That would have been the moment to do it, too. Because yeah. after that, then the Batter Skull can protect itself. So going to game two here. Looking at the sideboard. Timely reinforcements in Michael's sideboard. Another standard card. Another very recently printed standard card. Seeing play in Legacy. I predict Manrique Gusari will be brought in Seems good. by Seems uh, good. Michael Caffrey. Uh, it's none on the other side of the board, though. No Manrikis, no. but a sort of fire and ice. Manrikis Gusari, um, what it can do is you can use it to break your opponent's equipment. It's a piece of equipment that breaks other equipment. Right. Speaking of other equipment, sort of fire and ice in Paul's sideboard. Seems like a decent inclusion, protection from two of Michael's colors. I expect what we're going to see is, I expect that Paul Fenton is going to bring in Duress, I think he's going to bring in Path to Exile, and I think he's going to bring in Phyrexian Metamorph. The reason he'll bring in Metamorph, Metamorph copy can the copy the yeah. Bob, copy the Click to kill it and use the effect, or copy a Stoneforge Mystic, or if there's a Batter Skull in play or something like that, copy you can the copy it right away. I think that that's what you're going to expect there. Absolutely. It definitely seems like a nice match to have that available. On Both the, players have Metamorph available. On but. the other side of the table, I think that Michael Caffrey is going to bring in Dark Blast. Um, it's a repeatable answer to both Bob and Grim Lava Man, so Yeah. I think he's going to bring in Manrique Gusari. And... Diabolic Edict doesn't seem bad either. Edict is just fine. Um, I, I, at this point, we start getting into a bunch of cards that are fine, and that's right. the question. Go for which, the throw, which ghastly Which fine demise. card do you right. bring in? Do you bring in Disenchant? Maybe. Do you bring in Phyrexian Metamorph? I think it's less powerful in the Jace build, but I think it's still useful. You probably bring in the Metamorph because, uh, you know, you still want to copy the opponent's side of the board if they have the thing you don't have. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I know that uh, during a, a short window, during Affinity, um, 
I was talking with Zvi, and Zvi convinced me that uh, the card you wanted in the mirror at a certain point was, I believe, Sculpting Steel. And the reason, sometimes they had the Ravager and you didn't, and now you've got more Ravagers. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, I mean, I think that's that's a very big role that uh, Phyrexian Metamorph plays, both in Standard and in Legacy. And uh, I like Metamorph also, Phantasmal Image now fulfilling the same role in both Standard and Legacy. Uh, we have, like, basically mirror matches, where these cards kind of provide an additional copy of a key spell that your uh, that your opponent has. So like uh, like you were saying in in standard a few years ago back when Affinity was around, uh, sculpting steel. Now we have batter skulls in, in legacy that are being copied. It would be interesting to see him uh, I, I don't think this is likely, but copying uh, with all the equipment running around in uh, in both decks to see a copied Manriki Gusari uh, Michael has the Manriki Gusari. Paul would love to get a Metamorph to copy a Manriki Gusari and then destroy it, where he'd basically steal the Gusari from Michael. So we have uh, games underway. Michael leads with a creeping tar pit. A land I'm happy to see happy to see that seeing play in Legacy, because it's not gonna be in standard much longer. Paul leads on a Grim Lava Mancer. Underground C. And uh, I believe that was a Dark Blast for the Lava Mancer, just as uh, as we expected. Dark Blast in there, repeatable removal. Seems really good. Uh, I believe that was a Fetch Land. Some Glare, I think that's a Marsh Flats. For those of you who may be just joining us, I'm Joey Pasco here in the booth with Adrian Sullivan covering the StarCityGames.com Open Series here in Boston. This is round three of nine here in the Legacy portion. Yesterday we had standard, ten rounds of standard, followed by a top four this morning, culminating in a win from Blue-Red Splinter Twin Combo. So, him to Torok has met with a spell snare from Michael. And Bob now we back. Have Bob. Yeah. Must be killed. There's a bolt though. Looks like a bolt. Looked like it to me too. And there's the bolt. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's not a Grim bolt. Lava that's Grim Lava Mancer. Was it bolt that we may have been seeing uh, Swords to Plowshares in here, maybe? Yeah, there that was not bolt, that was Grim Lava Mancer. And Stoneforge Mystic. So Paul has no creatures at the beginning of turn. Two here as he passes the turn back to Michael after getting a Umazawa's Jite with the Stoneforge Mystic. Bob, though, represents a pretty, pretty big threat, I think. Not necessarily in his power and toughness so much as the, uh, the cards he represents. The extra cards he represents. Bob is one of the classic all-time best creatures. Usually the fight used to be What's the best creature in uh, in the game? And one of the answers was Tormogoyf. One was Dark Confidant. And now some Stone people Forge would put Mystic. in Stoneforge Mystic in that equation. So he dredges back the Dark Blast that he had used on the uh, the first Grim Lava Mancer, and I assume he's about to take out the second. Is that a Mishra's factory hanging back there on the ground? There is, yeah. It's a, it looks like a foil uh, DCI promo version of Mishra's factory. Dark Blast goes to work on Grim Lava Mancer. As expected. So that Dark Blast now has taken out two Grim Lava Mancers. Showing the power of the dredge spell. Not even in a dredge deck, just being able to reuse removal. Another card available in modern. <laughs> seems seems like an interesting pair with uh with Punishing Fire Grove, two repeatable removal spells. And that's that's enough to kill a four toughness creature. Yeah. Right? Double dark blast, dredge it back, 
Dark Blast, uh, and then Punishing Fire. Right now, Paul has a lot of land in his hand. He's got an Umazawa's Jite. He's contemplating whether or not he should go all in, put the Jite on the Stoneforge Mystic, and attack. But if he does go all in in this method, that does mean he's tapped out. So if Michael Caffrey has some sort of uh, instant removal spell, then that will mean he will basically be just kind of hurt. What he does instead is he takes care of the soul black source in play, easily replaced by the flooded strand with a wasteland, and says go. I actually like what the idea of going all in there. Lay the land, cast the Jite, and if it resolves, take care of that Dark Confidant now, before it does any more damage. Well, instead he decided to play defense here, or at least uh, be a little little less proactive in his uh, strategy. Michael reveals a polluted delta off the Bob, so Bob being very kind. A batter skull in hand, that actually changes the equation. I understand uh, it a lot more if he's got a batter skull. Right. So Michael with two fetch lands, cracks one, just the polluted delta. Looks like uh, he's got some sort of response to that batter skull. Could be a disenchant. Yeah, he's got two disenchants on the sideboard. Very well could be seeing one of those right there. And is there that, it is. That, yeah, disenchant. Is that That's a tempest? That's uh, the tempest disenchant. You can see her breaking the sliver, the metallic mm -hmm. sliver. That's Hannah Ship's Navigator, I think, on, in, featured in the artwork. <laughs> and now Paul has the option that he had before to potentially go forth and lay the Jite now and then come in getting rid of Dark Confidant, assuming nothing else goes wrong. I like getting rid of Bob. Thoughtseize. That's a, a, that's a bolt. Bolt yeah. gets rid of Bob. It does. <coughs> Michael says okay. Yeah, he's drawn a couple cards off of it, so. Seems decent. Now, news from the floor. We know that uh, Jerry Thompson <coughs> is now 3-0 with his Hypergenesis deck. A third of the way through the tournament. Doesn't mean, I mean, it, it's definitely great news, but uh, doesn't necessarily mean anything. We saw Nick Spagnolo yesterday go seven and zero, and then lose out in the last uh, two rounds. I don't know if he even ended up finishing in. Uh, I don't know if he went X and three or if he went seven and three or eight and two. So, Jace the Mind Sculptor from Michael Caffrey, probably not going to bounce the, the Mystic. No, he goes with a brainstorm. Seems like a nice play there. I agree with that. And uh, dredging away uh, some cards just to get that Dark Blast back. Now he does these lose an Umazawa's Jite to the yard, so his Stoneforge Mystic's slightly less powerful now. And end of the turn, and there's Mystic Umazawa's puts Jite into play. See the equip of the Jite. Got a thought season in his hand? Uh, I didn't quite see it. It's too quick. I'm gonna attack, he says. I attack. So this will uh, likely protect, I mean, it, if it does combat damage, in which uh, appears that Michael has an answer. Yeah, I don't think uh, he's gonna let it do combat damage. I think he's just gonna dark blast it to prevent it from dealing anything. It won't kill it, but it will uh, keep the damage down. No damage for you. The zero one one Mystic comes menacingly towards Michael's side of the table, but doesn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, again, I mean, I have to just point to Dark Blast and say, look how powerful this repeatable removal spell is. It's, uh... You know, it's already killed... Two Grim Lava Mancers, and now it's doing work to uh, nullify the advantages on an Umazawa's Jite. It does have some sort of cost in that it's putting a lot of cards in the graveyard, but I think. Uh, Draw, dredges three cards. Looks like click, lands, counterspell. I predict yeah. we're going to see a brainstorm effect next. 
brainstorm one, two, three. Now, what's also really fun is that he can put two cards back, and then if he's used his dark blast, when he dredges, clear out the car the cards he doesn't want anymore. Yeah. Nice interaction with Jace. Waiting to see where the next thing is. A uh, Mishra's factory gonna come on through. So he dark blasts away the, uh, the Stone Forge Mystic. I'm a little bit confused. How did he dark blast away that Stone Forge Mystic? It was um, it's uh, he casts the dark blast. He goes into the yard, right. activates the Jace the Mind Sculptor. Oh, that was draw, what it was. draw, dredge, recast it. Okay, that's what it was. So Mirren Crusader, Mirren Crusader, a promo Mirren Crusader, the buy a box promo. He carries a GTA very well since he's got double strike. He certainly does. Michael did all that work to. Uh, Yeah, he says, hold, hold up a sec. I'm it's not a card he wants to raise a health. You know what, what I think happened is Paul went to equip it and said, wait, can I take this back? And Michael said, yeah, that's fine. So he let him unequip. Because the turn is clearly Michael's at this point. Michael bounces the uh, Mirren Crusader after dredging back the Dark Blast. Gets in there with an activated Creeping Tar Pit and Mistress Factory, so there's five damage. Thought Seize from Paul. What you got? Dark Blast <laughs> and something else. Dark Blast and Misstep. Misstep. It's kind of like, well, you know I have the Dark Blast. I'm not paying mana or life for no reason here. You're going to get the Misstep one way or another. And the Misstep goes away. Makes Paul lose that life, too, in not countering the Thought Seize. Obviously, like I said, no reason to counter the Thought Seize. Michael already, I mean, Paul already knew Michael had the Dark Blast. Three mana. Same old Mirren Crusader. Still good. Gonna likely just take another counter off of Jace. Unless Michael has another uh, another way to answer it. We know he only has Dark Blast at this point. mana being spent here. Looks like four mana, perhaps? Drexian Metamorph. Hmm. Copies the Mirren Copy Crusader. Copies the Mirren Crusader, yeah. Bounces the Mirren Crusader from Paul. Thanks for the Mirren Crusader, buddy. Attack for two. Jace down to one token. Michael happy to uh, keep bouncing that Mirren Crusader with Jace, though. Mirren Crusader. Surprise. Equip. Equip it. And 
and now he's just hoping to have Jace die. He's bouncing it. Jace dies, and Mirror and Crusader is bounced yet again. Attack for nine on the nose. Yeah, that'll take game two for Michael Caffrey, taking us up to game three between Paul Fenton playing Team Italia and Michael Caffrey playing Esper Blade. I was saying uh, earlier, one of the other interesting uses of Phyrexian Metamorph, this more on Paul Fenton's side, is to copy Caffrey's Manrique Gusari and then destroy it in effectively stealing the Manrique Gusari from Michael in the same way that Michael just kind of stole a for, um, Rear and Crusader right. from, uh, from Paul. Very uh, very interesting card with a lot of options, be just in the fact that it can copy not just creatures, but artifacts, you know, and, uh, and it also does not require blue mana. Very cool card. Always like the idea of, um, you know, just when you copy a batter skull and then you get that return to hand ability, allowing you to change your mind on what exactly you copied. <laughs> So a couple changes here in the sideboard. Now, it's interesting, too, like all right, I, I mentioned earlier, Phantasmal Image showing up in Legacy. Timely reinforcements in Michael's sideboard uh, showing up in Legacy. We had Go for the Throat, very, very good card in Standard and Legacy. We're seeing a lot of Standard and very recently printed Standard cards showing up in Legacy. Surgical Extraction. Um, right. You know, like Phyrexian Metamorph, as I mentioned. So a lot of these recently printed cards showing up in Legacy, and we have a new set, a new big set coming out in just six weeks. September 30th is the release date of Innistrad, um, already available for pre-order on StarCityGames.com, and who knows what kind of cards we're going to see in that set showing up in this format. Not, obviously, it's going to completely change the face of Standard, but uh, cards like Batterskull... Had a, are having a big impact on Legacy. Batterskull, Phyrexian Metamorph. I mean, those were just, that was two sets ago. And, and Reinforcements and Phantasmal Image are, uh, you know, just this most recent set. So, very, very interesting how much of these new cards are affecting Legacy. And, and it kind of speaks to, uh, I guess, some level of power creep. Right? Just things just keep getting a little bit better. And... Uh, more and more older formats are being affected by recent sets. One of the things I'm kind of curious about is um, if we're going to see anything from the newly released, um, uh, what are we going to call it, commander sets, right? Right. And whether any of those cards are actually going to uh, end up joining the legacy team as like cards that are actually good. Yeah, there was talk early about um, it was an Edric, I believe, is the elf that uh, that allowed. He's, he's a green and blue and a one. Uh, that every time, uh, I guess it's whenever a creature does damage to your opponent, you draw a card. So there was talk of that being played as a green sun zenith target in some decks, like Bant decks, potentially li like something like no Bant to have available. Um, also, well, I mean, you could put it in no rug as well. Uh, also, elf decks could could capitalize on that just as an extra way to draw more cards in elf combo decks. So I that mean, was one. Uh, I know Flusterstorm was a card yeah. that uh, has already seen a little bit of play. Absolutely, and I think it's. it's I, I'm pretty sure a lot of the uh, a lot of that's about uh, about the hive mind decks doing well. Flusterstorm helps help oh. like the hive mind combo. I think. I'm actually also curious if Chaos Warp is a card yeah, that that's the actually other. Will, uh, will end up making any play. Yeah, that's one. And then there's... Uh, For those of you who don't know who Flusterstorm is, because, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, not everyone pays attention to uh, uh, strange sets like Commander. Right. Commander was released and it was tournament legal, but not legal in um, Standard or Extended, but only legal in the Eternal formats. Flusterstorm, blue, instant, counter target spell, or instant or sorcery spell, unless its controller plays one, Storm. Yeah. So, and then Chaos Warp is a uh, red two instant. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then reveals the top card of his or her library. If it's a permanent, they put it into the battlefield. So, what you can do is you can use Chaos Warp 
to basically get rid of any permanents, right. and then they get a random permanent from their deck. Yeah. Now, uh, meanwhile, it might not be a permanent if they don't have a permanent Right, revealed. if the top card is Counterspell, it does nothing. Yeah. Turn one for Paul Fenton after sideboard. Turn one Thoughtseize. And that reveals... Five, oh, lands, five lands, Stoneforge Mystic and Dark Blast. Uh, by Stoneforge Mystic, yeah. <laughs> I assume you're taking the Mystic. Taking a Dark Blast doesn't seem to get you anywhere. And that that's really kind of an interesting keep there from Michael, especially on the play, knowing his opponent has access to Thoughtseize, because I wonder if he was completely relying on that Stoneforge Mystic to resolve to get him into the game. Apparently another card that actually has seen some play in Legacy is Scavenging Ooze. That was the next one I was going to mention. A uh, not $1,200 version of Underground Sea from Michael Caffrey. <laughs> A much more conventionally priced one. Tide Hollow Sculler comes down for Paul Fenton. Michael wants to read it so he can uh, exa understand exactly how this is going to work. It's very much like an O-ring for a card in your hand. Uh, you can, uh... Yeah. That's a great way to put it. O-ring a card in your hand. Yeah, you take it, and, uh, once the, uh, once the Sculler dies, you get it back. So, he drew an Umazawa's GT on turn one. Paul knows... He knew Michael had the Dark Blast, so assuming he played that Sculler in an attempt to possibly take the Dark Blast, which seems like not that great of a, an idea, considering Michael could just Dark Blast the Sculler, make it a 1-1, one, one, and that way it's not available for him to take. There it goes. Um, Goodbye, Dark Blast. So, yeah, taking the Dark Blast. I'm kind of, kind of surprised Michael didn't... Well, I guess he just <laughs> figured I'm either losing the, uh, the GTA or the Dark Blast. I guess I'd rather lose the Dark Blast. Wasteland on the Tundra. Yeah, it's interesting. Michael basically had the choice to force Paul to take the Jite. Right. So instead, he, he obviously wanted him to take the Dark Blast. Dark Confidant. Get Spell Snare off the top. Wow. Michael's drawing live. Swamp. Jite. Go. The Jite was actually a very crazy weapon in uh, actual historical times. Wasn't it meant to break equipment like Manrique Gusari? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually usually meant to tangle up yeah. your body a bit, and it would might be used on things like your nostrils, like <laughs> like literally your nostrils and your hands. Seems pretty brutal, <laughs> just like it is in Magic. <laughs> Lots of land in both players' hands. Third land from Paul Fenton. Paul swings on in with the Tide Hollow Sculler. Yeah, the Sculler's doing some work. Says go. Now, as much as I said something about Michael being able to force Paul to take the Jite, Paul clearly, I mean, he had his eye on taking that Dark Blast. Says go. Paul draws. Swords to Plowshares, a land, and I think a, maybe a hint to Torok? I'm not sure. Attack for another two. Can you make out what that other card is? That Paul is, uh, well, I guess his hand is down now. It's a double fetch for Michael Caffrey. Maybe even a triple fetch. Probably just a double, leaving himself with a fetch land so that if he draws a brainstorm, he'll still have a fetch. Yeah. But he's trying to thin out his deck here. Oh, no, he goes all in. All of those cards away. Must have a reason. Is it, uh, he's got four mana. Is it Jace? Does he go four mana Jace bounce? I don't think he's drawn a card yet, is the thing. Oh. Did he not have... Is it possible he doesn't have Jace in hand? Now? I think this is end of turn. Okay. I mean, I was trying so hard to see what was in Paul's hand. It's possible Michael has already drawn, so... Yeah, yeah, he actually, it, he has drawn. I was okay. paying attention to uh, Paul's hand, so I didn't see. And so, sack, 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 Jace the Mind Sculptor. It resolves. Jace for the Brainstorm. brainstorm. Yeah. 
you know, Jace bounce doesn't seem so exciting. You get a dark blast back that you are just going to lose if he just replays the uh, force him to replay the Sculler. He's just going to take the dark blast or something better that may be in your hand. So at this point, Jace is out of uh, out of Sculler range uh, at this point with three counters on him. Back to Paul. Lightning, Lightning bolts. bolts. Mental, Mental misstep <laughs> thrown onto yeah. the table. So, no, thank you. No. I know Paul has swords. Uh, is that another Tide Hollow Sculler? I'm not entirely sure. I think yes, it is. that's yes, a Tide Hollow Sculler. Tide Hollow Sculler reveals a sword of uh, feast, feast and, and famine, famine and a yeah. sword to plowshares. So he takes the sword. Oh, I'm sorry. Takes the swords to plowshares. Yeah, takes the swords <laughs> to plowshares. I, yeah, I have to actually finish that uh, card name rather than just shortening it to sword. Yeah, okay, there's him to a, Turok. Uh, him to Turok to take away the sword of feast and famine. And Tidehell is color knocks Jace to one counter. Michael has no cards at hand until his draw step. So he's totally playing off the top and... I think uh, there's a brainstorm. Kind of funny play. Uh, Paul Fenton, the opponent tapped out, casts that Thought Seize. His opponent had two cards left in the hand, so the hand would have taken care of him. Yeah, it is kind of odd that, I mean, unless he was... Oh, I mean, to yeah. cast the Tide Hollow Scholar, my bad. But, uh, yeah. It's almost... Yeah, it's like if he would have uh, just hemmed him, the Tide Hollow Scholar would have just been a 2 2. I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, it could matter. The, I mean, the way it matters there, there is wouldn't the be a, There yeah. wouldn't be a source to plowshares under that Scholar. Exactly. You yeah. can get a chain of removal there. You're right. Kill the Tide Hollow Scholar, kill the Tide Hollow Scholar. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you're right. All it'll take is one removal spell. Interestingly, he could have bounced the Scholar, swords the other Scholar, and had the Dark Blast in hand. Here's that play we that you're talking about. Swords. swords. one. That's her move. Get a Swords back. Swords the, the other. Swords. Yeah, that, that Get the dark play blast with the Hematorok is really punishing yeah. him now. It is. And now there's an unmolested Jace on the table. This is like the dream scenario for Michael, then, unless something happens. There's an Elspeth. Elspeth. Never mind, I'll take back the dream. Elspeth is a beating. Yeah, it is no longer a dream scenario. <laughs> yeah, Michael, I mean, able to recover pretty well. Dark, dark blasts, blasts the token. Yeah, he dark blasts the uh, token that Elspeth made. Probably a good, good call. And he can also just dredge it back and keep keep that Elspeth contained, or at least as far as tokens go, but soon enough she's going to be able to just go off if he uh, doesn't doesn't fight her somehow. Like with something like Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic drawn and cast. He's already got Umazawa's Jite there. There's a batter skull. He does a quick check of the top of Paul's library. It goes to the bottom. Ceiling happening. This means that, uh, well, never mind. Forgot he already got rid of that token. Okay. Equips the Umazawa's Jite to um, Stoneforge Mystic. Paul, at 21 life with an Elspeth on board, seems to be in much better shape than I think he is. Like, the Elspeth is relevant, but potentially not for very long. Thought sees. Take care of that batter skull. Uh, unless he brainstorms, huh? which is... Uh, and then there's a source to plowshares in Paul's hand. He can swords that Stoneforge Mystic, potentially. Yeah, he was tapped out. He couldn't brainstorm to protect that batter skull. I forgot. There it goes. Swords the Stoneforge Mystic.
Now we have uh, Michael who can dredge back the Dark Blast. Doesn't do that at this point. The Jace's brainstorm ability will always let him have the access right. to that Dark Blast if he wants it. Decides not to. Brainstorm will still give him access to the Dark Blast if he wants it. That's, that's true. Plays a Wasteland. Says go. He's going to plus three it. It's a bad call, though, because of the brainstorm. That, uh... Going to put Elspeth up to seven. but this creeping ever closer to ultimate. That could very well become relevant. Mm -hmm. And there's the brainstorm into the dark glass, which deals with the token before it gets the plus three, plus three. There's a bob from Paul. This is a really, really neat game to watch right here because both players seem to be, it's really like pushing back and forth. Absolutely. It's not really, uh, you know, it's not really one-sided. Where it seems one-sided, it, it swings the other way. So dredge back the Dark Blast yet again for Michael. Take care of that Bob, uh, potentially. Brainstorm with Jace. Trying to decide where to put back. Looks like he's got... Three cards, choosing between those three, or choose. Yeah, okay. He was actually sculpting his hand there. Choose which three to keep. Put the other two back. Creeping carpet that will help deal with Elspeth, but Dark Blast. just in time actually. Is Paul? Paul is uh, yeah drawing off the top. So if he doesn't have an answer for creeping carpet. Thoughtseize takes Counterspell. Okay. So here, Elspeth, Elspeth token. makes a token, goes to eight counters. And, and now it's uh, going to see Creeping Tar Pit yeah. plus Umazawa's Jite, just, I think, taking the game over finally. Finally, I mean, this was really... It really uh, it's so much pushing back and forth. Now, yeah. one of the key moments was that, that um, Himbatorak turn. It, it was. It was. Those Tide Hollow Skullers really, he... Uh, he wouldn't have been able to wipe out their scholars the way he did. So, Creeping Tar Pit turns into a creature, picks up a Jite, swings in at Elspeth, knocks her down to five counters, probably, well, accumulating counters on the Jite. Michael, of course, happy to just leave those counters there for now and leave, leave the token there for now. Fate seals Paul, which I think is definitely the play. And Passes now there's back. not much left here. So Paul now, he says keep it too, which is even the worst, so <laughs> land. Uh, now, when he tries to activate Elspeth to pump the token, he would, uh, he'll would he lose it. But he just gets another token, which Michael can now just kill both. Ah, Umazawa's Jite, he's like, kill both, maybe. Or at least kill one. He, he didn't even kill one. He just, just took it. He, that's, that's fine. Well, yeah, it's one, one damage. It's really not that big of a deal. Those Jeet counters may actually be more valuable. So here he goes again at Elspeth. She was, uh, she was at five, up to six. Now she's going down to three. Goes all in on it. That's seven. And then gets two counters back. Yep, which will uh, wipe out those tokens. He needs more die to uh, do another fate seal with Jace. He is well on his way to mind sculpting Paul. Puts that one on the bottom. So Paul is drawing, drawing live off the top of his deck at this point. Draws. Don't know what it was. It was a Stone Forge Mystic. That's oh, a decent wow. draw, yeah. And Michael tapped out. Can get Umazawa's Jite if he's got one left in his library. Uh, I don't know if he does. 
I don't remember. I, I don't think remember he might. either. I think he might have I feel one. Like I don't I think it's been in the mix. I feel like I saw it earlier, but it may have been game two. Oh, but wow. there's a batter skull. I think a batter skull is going to get trumped by the GTA in play. Yeah, he chooses batter skull and is thinking about it. Um, <laughs> is he telling him, is Michael advising him on what equipment to pick? <laughs> Maybe. He's like, you don't want that, man. You want to get a GTA and get rid of my GTA. <laughs> it seems that way, yeah. Michael's tapped out. Uh, I mean, if that's what, pretty much what he said, that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, that's a very nice thing for him to do. So now he casts Umazawa's Jite on the stack. Michael kills off two tokens before uh, before the Jite resolves. So Jeet fight, both now in the graveyard. We've got a Stoneforge Mystic, just basically a Squire at this point, unless Paul top decks equipment. I've always felt that it's possible that uh, Tetsuo Umazawa is the Umazawa that is being referred to in Umazawa's Jite. I mean, not, 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 not Toshiro, not Toshiro Umazawa. Umazawa. Could have been both. Could be passed down. I don't know. I think Toshiro Umazawa wields another weapon. You can see a Jite in Tetsuo's hand. And is it not there in, uh, in Toshiro? I'm pretty sure Toshiro's holding something that looks like a Jite as well. That's no Jite. No. It's a sword. No, it does it's look cleaning like a, sword a bloody too. sword. He's got the Jite in his uh, in his belt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he had the Jite in the storyline, although I don't remember totally clearly. I did read those books, though. <laughs> Jace is activated. Diabolic Edict taking care of uh, Stoneforge Mystic goes on the table. Paul Fenton draws a card, lays a land, says go. There and says, never mind, that's it. Mind sculpted. Mind sculptured. The blue is better than the, uh, the Team Italia you, version. You be quiet, you I bad, told you Team guy. Italia needs more blue. <laughs> needs Lightning more bolt blue. for life. <laughs> I like a bolt, but I like, I like an eye 